Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today on Todos Santos, we're moving over to the southern edge of town, where we're going to start building in the hills. Uh, today we're focusing on another utility build, which is the city's main landfill. So let's get right to it. Now, for some strange reason, I wanted to give myself the challenge of building a landfill in the hills instead of just doing it on a piece of flat open land, as you probably should do. But uh, I was taking inspiration from a real landfill in San Juan, or in the vicinity of San Juan at least, which I'll show you in a second here. Uh, but first, I just wanted to extend our freeway and kind of make it fit the terrain a little bit better. I kind of like the idea of uh, having this highway uh, leave the hev heavily urbanized part of Todos Santos and then kind of immediately get into the hills. Uh, I guess it kind of gives an excuse uh, to have the development taper off right away without having to actually build all the way up to the edge of the map. So it's just going to work out uh, pretty well in that sense. So we're just extending the freeway through the hills. I'm trying to generally follow the terrain as it is in the map, just kind of emphasizing it in certain places, raising up some hills and lowering it in others to get some valleys. So here I wanted the highway to come up and meet with the rail. I'm imagining that this rail uh, used to serve the sugarcane industry, bringing crops in from the center of the island and up to the port of Todos Santos, where it would be shipped away or processed or whatever they're going to do with it. But because of the rest of the island is so hilly, much like Puerto Rico, which is a quite hilly place overall, there's really not that much space for roads and rail and any other kind of networks to go through. So they need the highway to be pushed right up against the rail so that there's actually enough room for it to meander along through the hills. And one thing that I've noticed quite a bit of uh, looking at pictures of the highways in Puerto Rico is that uh, you'll occasionally get uh, some short viaducts to cross some of these valleys or to cross in between hills rather than uh, blast out a bunch of land to go around or, you know, reroute it somewhere else. And it gets these kind of cool short spans of highway going over things like that. So I wanted to have a couple of those. We have one on either side. Uh, we have this very simple park low interchange. Uh, this was inspired by uh, one in the, in the inspiration that we're going to look at in a second, but I just simplified it a little bit because uh, we don't have quite as complex of a road network passing by here. So I just wanted to go with that very simple park low. And it's going to do well enough to serve all the traffic that's going to and from the landfill and the small town that we're going to build nearby. I thought it was kind of cool to have, uh, instead of having the crossroad going over the freeway, uh, meeting up with the park low, and then just kind of continuing out, it actually meets up at this T intersection and then that road uh, goes along and that's going to be the main road that services this whole area. So I thought that was kind of an interesting uh, style of road network to do here and I just wanted to do something a little bit out of the ordinary here. So even though it's not really that efficient to have two intersections so close to one another, uh, it doesn't really need to be that efficient because it's basically just a rural interchange. Now starting on the landfill, I did a quick outline uh, as you can see with these gravel roads and that's just to get a sense of scale. So I went onto Google Earth, uh, use the little measuring tool that they give you on the bottom right, and uh, try to get an approximation of how big a landfill should be, at least in this sort of environment. Uh, so I just drew that out. Uh, if you didn't know, one game unit, one of these zoning units, is supposed to be eight meters. Uh, the scale's not quite right. Uh, you know, obviously things are going to match up, different assets are going to be at different scales, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it's generally a good rule of thumb that one unit is eight meters. So I tried to measure that out. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's basically the size of the inspiration that we're using. And the point really isn't to get it exactly right. The point is just to get it in, at the right like order of magnitude. So you might be surprised if you go into Google Earth or Google Maps and measure out, uh, say, an airport runway somewhere and then compare it to the vanilla runways on the vanilla airports. It's not even close, and so when you put those sort of things down, you're not going to get the right look if you're going for a realistic city. Obviously, not everyone is, and that's fine with me, but personally, I'm going for somewhat of a realistic scale, or at least that's what I want. Uh, I don't always achieve that, but I found that doing that sort of uh, scaling can really make it just more fun to build because you have more space to work with. Anyway, I also wanted to get a sense of where the different cells of the landfill are going to go. And I'll get more into um, what the different cells are. But basically, there are different uh, stages of a landfill that I wanted to represent in this build uh, so that we could have some variety in the detailing. Now, I initially wanted to respect the topography, as they say, um, but that didn't really work out because uh, these cells, I, I just 
I knew I was going to need them to be flat in order to do any kind of detailing without uh, totally destroying my fingers and brain, which has been known to happen before. So I ended up uh, flattening all of them out, and they do each kind of step up. So there's one cell at one elevation, the next cell behind it is a little higher up, but each cell itself is flat, so I'm glad I did that. Uh, because if I hadn't, it would have made the detailing we're going to do later uh, all the more challenging. Now there are a few different parts to a landfill other than just the cells where you actually put the uh, stuff that's filling up the land, all the garbage. Um, there's basically a runoff basin where all the water running out that's, uh, you know, passed by all this trash and picked up all this nasty stuff uh, gets put in. And it's basically like a little mini water treatment plant. Another part of the landfill are these gas flares. I'm not exactly sure why I put two down. I feel like it should only have one. And it's not quite the right type of asset, but basically what it is is it's a little chimney where you burn off uh, methane gas that is created by all the stuff in the landfill and uh, you burn it basically converting it into co2 which is slightly not as bad for the atmosphere now i kind of messed up with po there's an effects module where you can basically create different fires and explosions and that kind of stuff but to create that you have to attach it to something that's turned into a po and then i found out if you delete the po before you remove the effects module the effect remains and you can't actually get rid of this thing. So I basically just had this explosion floating in the middle of the landfill that I couldn't get rid of. So I had to uninstall the effects module, uh, but don't worry, we'll go back and fix that later on. We also have a hazardous waste area. So there's this little shed and tent where if you were dropping off batteries and electronics and that kind of stuff, you could uh, put it there. And I don't know exactly what they do with it after that, but uh, at least it's out of your hands, I guess. I also have a little shed where they keep some of their uh, heavy machinery. Seems like you need all kinds of loaders and everything to get trash in and out of the uh, waste transfer trucks that you can see driving around here. Uh, and also you need to move lots of earth and all that kind of stuff. So they have a whole bunch of machinery here. We're also going to have some around doing various things at different points in the landfill as we get to detailing later on. Over here in one corner of the landfill, we have some compost windrows. This would be municipal composting, so they'd collect all the, you know, kitchen scraps and uh, stuff like that, uh, dump it into these long rows. I don't know exactly why they do that, but it's something to do with the process of composting, which is uh, apparently very precise and uh, technical. I don't really understand it, but basically you'll see these long rows of organic material rotting away. I know you sometimes find these at uh, landfills. It seems like it might not be the best idea to have it right next to all these active landfill cells that we're going to build later on, but what do I know? We also have an area for disposal of tires, and by disposal I basically mean throwing them into a giant pile and leaving them there until the end of time. I have a couple of them scattered around that have uh, rolled away. It kind of makes sense if you're just throwing tires into a pile that occasionally some of them would roll off and end up along the windrows. <laughs> uh, we also have this tall tower of tires at the center. Not sure exactly who put that there and uh, why it's there, but it is there, so that's something. I think these assets look really nice when you pile up a bunch of them like that. Probably not good for performance, but oh well. I also have some uh, appliance disposal. Pretty much the same thing as the tires, just a giant pile that's going to sit there forever. Uh, I didn't really have a lot of appliance assets, just this one that I had to copy and paste over and over again. And then I thought I'd throw in a few uh, grills as well, which I don't think really fit into the same category as like, you know, washers and dishwashers and that kind of stuff. But it looks vaguely appliance-like, so we'll just have to go with that. Of course, we need to fence off this place. You don't want people coming in and uh, messing around in the landfill, necessarily. Maybe you do, I don't know. Uh, but personally, it doesn't seem like what I want going on in Todos Santos. And then at the entrance that we formed uh, from all these fences, we've got a little way station area. Uh, some landfills, it seems like you'll uh, go in and they'll take your weight going in, and then they'll weigh you on the way out, and they'll charge you based on how much weight you've left with them. I'm using this way station decal by Beard Monkey. He has like a way station set that's uh, pretty nice. It's been around for a while, but it still holds up. And it was looking a little bit too clean, so I need to throw down some damage decals. You know, when you get lots of trucks coming and going pretty much constantly, it seems like that's the kind of damage you might see there. Probably need to repave that, actually. They should uh, really get on that. And uh, this is something I saw $2.20 do quite a while ago, is use these parking lot road parking lots uh, to create invisible parking spots. So I just have those clipped into the ground there. Uh, you do have to actually raise them up a little bit, otherwise the cars are going to be sunken down into the ground, of course, because it's meant to be used on a sunken road. But it's just a handy way to get some functional parking 
in an area where you don't necessarily want like a nice parking lot with a bunch of painted lines. That just didn't really seem like it fit in here. So I went with that. On the other hand, the main entrance to this building here is actually, you know, at least somewhat landscape. So we have some grass and trees, a uh, nice curb running around the center. I think that really helps it uh, pop and uh, keeps the roads from looking too plain. I also found this really cool overgrown network, and it's uh, really nice to clip into the bottom of fences like this. You could probably do it with IMT, honestly, and save on some uh, nodes and segments on your node limit, which is probably a good idea. Uh, and then there are some areas where people are walking through fairly often, um, so we're just using those dry grass decals to represent that. I just need a couple more decals, some more grass to fill in these areas here. And next up, we're going to get to working on the actual cells of the landfill, where all the garbage is going to go. Uh, this place is the Landfill and Recycling Center of Guaynabo, which is uh, near San Juan, part of the metropolitan area. I thought it was kind of cool how it was up in the hills, which is why I decided to build this place up in the hills in the first place. But I wanted to try to pay homage to that by having a structure that kind of looks like this hill. As far as I can tell, it seems to be a finished or closed uh, landfill cell. So once they have it all filled in and they can't really fit any more garbage in, you cover it up and plant some grass on top and it just turns into this kind of interesting tiered hill. So I just uh, take some of these pedestrian roads and uh, form them up into this kind of shape. It ends up looking a bit more like a ziggurat than a pyramid. It's kind of hard to get those steep slope shapes uh, without doing some uh, crazy stuff with PO or node controller, but I think this uh, does well enough and it gets the general idea into our landfill, which is what I was going for. I didn't really have any good grass textured roads to do this with, so I just have to use these dirt pedestrian roads, uh, like I mentioned, and then make it look like grass by putting down some grass theme decals from the bubble grass pack. And then uh, a couple of these seams here and there covered up with the prop versions so that it looks nice and smooth. As I said before, I wanted to have various stages of these landfill cells in our landfill here, just so that we could have some more interest in the detailing. So this next one is like what I think of when I think of a landfill, which is, uh, I guess they would call it an active cell. So there's actually garbage being piled in here, but there are a few details beyond just uh, putting a bunch of garbage in a pit, although that's definitely the main aspect of this cell. Uh, one of them is that it's usually put down on top of some sort of material or liner, uh, and that keeps some of the nasty stuff from leaching into the ground. So I'm just using, uh, I don't remember exactly what this is, but some sort of ploppable surface, um, and that's just to represent that it's some sort of like vinyl looking texture. I didn't really have anything specifically made for this purpose, so I just had to use this dark surface. And then uh, adding down some of these, I guess these would be like to weigh it down or something like that, these little strips, or maybe these would just be the seams in between the pieces of the liner, I'm not sure. It can get uh, pretty tedious doing this sort of angled stuff, especially with PO, because you need to get everything lined up perfectly. And it looks a little rough as it is, but we're gonna clean it up, put some decals down and stuff. It's gonna look nice, and uh, I think it ends up resembling what I'm going for, at least. I probably didn't need to put these pieces down on the bottom because we're just gonna end up covering all of that up with trash. But anyway, once I did that, I went around and made sure the whole cell was filled in with this liner. And then I had these little pieces of grass poking through, so I had to use some terraforming roads to get rid of that. But then uh, resulting from that, there's this big gap here, so we have to come in and add some more of these props, which is uh, a lot easier because they're flat this time, which is nice. And I think it actually really helps to sell it. It looks like the liner is actually uh, kind of draped over into the pit here instead of uh, instead of just kind of unnaturally having these like angled pieces sticking down. So of course I went around and took this theme around the whole cell and then I wanted to add a few more details. Since this is supposed to be uh, like the main active cell at the landfill, I thought it would be a good excuse to have some uh, things indicating the sort of stuff that would go on at this kind of place. So I have two of these uh, material handler props. Uh, I'm getting rid of the top on one of them and the bottom on the other. And so what I wanted to do is have the bottom one be stationary and then the top one is going to be plopped on top of it. And then I'm going to use the self-rotation module from PO in just a second and have that rotating back and forth. I mean, really it goes in a circle, but I think you get the idea that it's supposed to be rotating from this truck, which is uh, full of waste. And uh, it's plopping it down into the landfill cell. I didn't actually have a prop um, for like a waste transfer truck, so I just had to make one myself. Uh, it's never gonna come out as good as if an actual asset creator has made it, 
but I think it uh, serves its purpose just fine. Now here I'm adding the self-rotation module. Basically just makes it turn around and around and around over and over again. And then uh, another thing with these active landfill cells is that I, and I didn't know this before I started researching for this episode, but uh, basically every single day at most landfills, they'll cover up the cell so it's not open overnight, you know, which could lead to all kinds of horrible things happening, I'm assuming. You can either cover it up with like a physical liner like you have down in the cell, you can uh, spray stuff onto it that covers it in that way, or you can just scrape some dirt onto it. So at the Toto Santos landfill, they just uh, go the simple route that's the easiest to detail, and they have these piles of dirt that they scrape onto the landfill. I'm using this set of pile props and decals by Ronix, not just for these piles of dirt, but also for a lot of the ground decals that we're using elsewhere, like these uh, light colored ones I think look really nice for areas that don't have like freshly turned up dirt. Um, it would be a little drier and a little lighter colored, so I'm using that there. And then maybe on some of these slopes, there's like more water running down after it rains, so it gets a little bit wetter and it get, there's more erosion. Um, so it's a little darker. Now I thought the landfill looked a little plain just with these trash props in them. So I wanted to add some things from my prop collection that I thought people in Toto's Hontos might have thrown out. So we have a basketball hoop, a bike, a TV, stop sign, uh, an interchange sign for some reason. Not sure uh, how that ended up in the landfill, but it's there. I also got rid of the post because I figured that wouldn't actually be something that would like fit into a truck that would take it to the landfill. Uh, there's a cannon for some reason. A uh, fast food chicken sign thing, I guess. A tiki umbrella. And a water tank. That's uh, really it. I got tired of turning things into POs and putting them at weird angles, so I just uh, kind of stopped at that point. But I thought we got enough in there uh, just to give it a little bit more of a story. Now, there are obviously still a few landfill cells left to detail, so we have some of them in various stages of development. Uh, this one is currently being like dug out. They're digging out the actual pit where they're going to throw all the trash. Uh, right now it's just a flat piece of land that's been leveled out and uh, they're just starting to dig it up. Uh, this one has already been dug out. They haven't started actually putting anything in it. There's no liner or anything like that. It's just an empty pit. Uh, I'm using node controller to angle these roads here, which is actually a uh, really nice way to do it as opposed to using PO like we did before. It's a little harder to, to be precise, but it's just overall a lot easier to do and a lot quicker to do as well. Uh, now, because this one's dug out and it's being prepared to be used as, a, as an active landfill cell, uh, we need some pipes in the bottom. I think these are called leachate pipes. Leachate is like uh, all the stuff that leaks out of, or at least has the potential to leak out of the landfill as it gets wet and rained on and that kind of stuff, and into the uh, soil, which is generally not a good thing because it's pretty uh, nasty stuff. So they have these pipes uh, that uh, at least do their best to collect it and send it off to the water treatment basin that we made before. I'm using these uh, giant riverbed decals by Ronix. Uh, I think they look like the sort of uh, dirt you would see in a landfill cell, I suppose. Uh, I'm changing the colors so that there's variation between the two cells here. Uh, one of them, uh, the darker one, is since it's in the process of being dug out, it's going to be a lot more wet. They're turning up all the uh, dirt underneath, which is obviously going to be more wet than the dirt on top. And then the other one has already been dug out, so it's had time to dry out, so it's a little bit lighter. Now there's a system of pipes here. I'm not sure if these are usually above ground. I feel like I don't usually see this kind of stuff when I look at pictures of landfills. Not that I spend that much time looking at pictures of landfills, but I think you get the idea. Uh, but I decided to have them be above ground so it would give me an excuse to uh, add some details here and there. But basically it's pipes that collect uh, the methane gas that off gases from the landfill stuff. And uh, that's what they send over to these gas flares where they burn it off into CO2. I'm just adding a few of these uh, cool street pipe props, and they look like the sort of stuff you might see in this kind of uh, like gas collection system. There are a few of these uh, little stations here with these bollards around them. Those would be like little wells where you could look down and uh, test uh, either the water or the gas and uh, see what it's actually composed of when it's running through the pipe system. Now just a couple more left to go. Over here we have a completed cell over next to the main active cell. So we have the same thing with the liner and the piles, except uh, this pile is covered in dirt because it's all finished. Uh, luckily, uh, because it's meant to be filled, it's I don't actually have to make it sunk down into the ground and do all that angled stuff. I can just have these flat props representing uh, the little flaps at the end uh, before it goes down into the pit. And I didn't mention this when we were doing the active cell, but I have these roadwear decals that I think add a nice texture 
uh, and really sell that as like some sort of vinyl like material i'm not sure what it's usually but i think it has the right look at least which is what i'm going for now this one is very simple just a flat piece of land that they've uh, pretty much cleared out of all the vegetation and everything except for one little bit in the corner and so there's not really much detailing to do here other than just a few decals to represent the grass underneath the pipes here um, obviously they wouldn't actually be able to clear that out regularly so we'd have some grass growing up and then there's this one little patch of greenery that they haven't gotten rid of yet now at this point i had uh, started another game session so i had the opportunity to reinstall the effects module of procedural objects so i got to redo the fire effect uh, without messing it up this time uh, so I went through various options that it had. Uh, it has a lot of cool different things like smoke and explosions and all that. I wanted to go for something uh, a little subtle. I'm not sure exactly how this looks. I slowed it way down so you get these kind of intermittent little puffs of flame. I don't know like what it's actually supposed to look like, but that's what I ended up doing. I might go back and change it. I'm not sure if I really like it uh, kind of going in slow motion like that. Uh, let me know what you think of that. So while we were up here building the hills, I thought I'd take the time to fill in some of the uh, details and do some development of the area. So we're starting with a river that runs underneath these two bridges here. Uh, we're going to place a water source. It kind of fills it up a little bit too much. I wanted this to be a bit more of a skinny uh, river, but it ended up being kind of a, a deluge going down into the town. But uh, we're going to add some details to fix that up in just a second. But I wanted to create a temporary location for this water to flow down to because otherwise it's gonna um, basically just completely inundate the whole city, which I don't want to happen, obviously. So I'm using a terraforming road, uh, basically dragging it in the shape that I want and then selecting all the nodes with move it and sloping them so that we get a nice gentle slope down from the hills over to the flat part of town. I think the most annoying thing about working with water in this game is how long it takes for it to actually flow when you uh, create a new river or uh, other sort of waterway like this. I mean, that footage was sped up by 60 times. All the in-game speed was set to maximum. Yeah, takes forever. Uh, but now we got to go in and detail the river up. Uh, just to make it a little easier on myself so I didn't have to make the river go all the way to the edge of the map, I wanted to uh, imagine that this river is probably buried for a while underneath the town that we're going to make in just a second. And this over here is the outlet where it pops out of a hill in a little culvert and goes rushing down to the main part of the city. Uh, so I just have this little outlet hidden under some grass to make it look like uh, some sort of culvert or pipe. Now, while I was working with all this foliage, I thought it would be a good time to put some trees down because obviously in the hills of Todos Santos, they're basically gonna be completely forested. I was experimenting with these iron bark trees by uh, Delmo. I think that's how you say it is Delmo, silent P, I guess. I think that's right. Uh, anyway, I think I put a few too many of them down, but they do have a nice uh, kind of canopy look that you get in tropical areas. There really is a, a lack of uh, non-palm tropical trees on the workshop, at least of the sort that uh, you find in Puerto Rico from what I can find. Uh, so anyway, I, at various points in the series, we're going to keep trying different sets of trees and, uh, you know, we'll have a nice variety and hopefully get something that looks realistic. Uh, for the rest of the landfill, though, we're just going to surround it with our usual low poly tree collection because I don't want to completely kill uh, what little is left of my FPS. I noticed this little town in the hills by the landfill that I used for inspiration. I don't know like what its name is, but I thought it was really cool to see this uh, just little town center in the middle of the hills. So we're going to build something uh, resembling that. And while we're at it, we're also going to do a, a pretty massive suburban expansion into the hills as well in the form of some fairly low density residential development. I'm just using these uh, two way skinny roads. Uh, trying to follow the terrain in a way that's sensible using switchbacks on particularly steep slopes and otherwise just trying to stick to the valleys and areas that aren't quite as sloped as most of the hills. Uh, this is really going to be the extent of Todos Santos, uh, at least in the southern direction. Uh, as you might have seen, we're pretty close to the edge of the map, um, but I do want to have a little bit of a buffer space between any development we do in the edge of the map. Uh, just as I mentioned before, it can get a little awkward to build right up to the edge, and it just uh, looks weird and doesn't really fit with everything else. So we're just going to have a buffer of uh, dense forest in between here and the edge of the map. Now for this little uh, town center, uh, I, the main feature is 
this baseball field because I just thought it was really cool to squeeze a baseball field into the middle of the hills here. Uh, I think that looks really cool. Of course, we're pairing it along with a school like we normally do in Toto Santos. And then there are just a few businesses here that serve this whole suburb. I don't know if it really makes sense to have a gas station in this small of a town this far away from the main highway. Don't really know if that makes sense, but I think it seems kind of cool to have that here nonetheless. And then just a couple other businesses, restaurants, shops, pharmacies, the usual. So we're gonna do that, plop down a whole bunch of houses and uh, then do a little bit of detailing. Felt like the town needed a little bit of TLC before we end the episode, so just a, a few nice planters along the main street, and then some shade trees and palm trees as well, just for decoration. And uh, one hard thing about doing this kind of development, where each house has its own large lot, is that you get these big green spaces in between, which look pretty awkward when you look at it from a distance. Um, especially in this kind of area where you'd either have most likely like dense grass or lots of trees in between each house. Uh, so I had to go back in and uh, fill in the space in between pretty much each house with a cluster of trees. But I just cut uh, most of that footage out because it got pretty tedious. Uh, so of course this place needs to be a new neighborhood. It's always kind of fun to see how uh, your city gets divided up into different sectors. Uh, I don't actually have a name for this one yet. I called it Vertadero, which means landfill, uh, as far as I understand. It actually sounds like a, a pretty nice word if you don't know what it means. Um, but it's definitely not going to stay as that. It's not meant to actually reflect on this area or the inspiration that I used for it. It's not a dump. It's uh, actually a pretty nice place. <laughs> uh, so if you have any name suggestions for that, uh, please let me know, and I'll consider uh, using that for the name of this hillside neighborhood. So that's it for this episode of Toto Santos. I hope you enjoyed your time in the city today, and I can't wait to see you on the next one. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>